So that was Blind by Lifehouse. Now we're going to talk to you about an article entitled, Do People with Autistic Spectrum Disorder Show Normal Selection for Attention? Evidence from Change Blindness. So this is Time Magazine, which says, New Insights into the Hidden World of Autism. We'd like to know if these new insights have to do with change blindness. So being as interested in blindness as Amanda and I are, we decided to keep reading when we found this article. Now for some background on autism. Autistic Spectrum Disorder, ASD, is a developmental disorder with symptoms divided into three types of problems. These include social interactions, imagination, and communication. Importantly, studies suggest that people with ASD visually attend to the world in an unusual way. In this study on change blindness, semantic information refers to the meaning or role attributed to an item in the visual array, and the context information refers to the relationship between an object and its surroundings, a new paradigm that can be used to study the influence of semantic and contextual properties is the paradigm of change blindness. According to Rensick and his colleagues, change blindness occurs because attention is required to explicitly perceive a stimulus in the visual field. We can't see everything in pictures because our attentional resources are limited. Rensick also points out that there is a direct relationship between how quickly we detect a change and how early we directed our attention to the object that changed. The researchers in this study wanted to know how autistic selection of items for focused attention compares with typically developing attention. Now we're on to the methods section. The autistic group comprised of 19 high-functioning adolescents and young adults, aged 17 to 26 years, with autism. All had been diagnosed with either high-functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome. The typically developing comparison group comprised 19 students from a community college and a sixth form college, aged 17 to 32 years. The experiment used Rensick's flicker test at two levels, central and marginal. Central would mean that the change occurred in the middle of the page where attention would most likely be placed, and marginal meant it was somewhere elsewhere outside of the center area of the picture. Now I'll explain the experimental portion of this study. The participants used a computer program that was set up as follows. First they were presented with a blank screen for 500 milliseconds. Then they were presented with the first image in the trial pair. When they pressed the space bar, they would see a blank white screen for 300 milliseconds followed by the second image. The participant could press the space bar as much as they wanted. They would be presented with the same blank screen for 300 milliseconds between the two picture trials. Once the participant noticed a change in the two pictures, he pressed enter. The image would then remain on the screen so that the participant can point to the location of the difference and verbally describe how it was changed. The participant then would move on to the next trial by pressing the end key. This is a pictorial representation of what I just explained. After the experimental process was over, the participants were scored. There were four possible responses to each trial. If they pressed the enter key by accident, it was a mistake response. If they incorrectly guessed, it was a wrong response. If they just gave up and moved on, it was a pass response. All of these were considered wrong answers. If they got it correct, that would be a correct response. The results indicated that both groups responded with a similar pattern to the images presented. They took longer to detect marginal changes to a scene than they did to detect central changes. The pattern was not identical though. Although people with autism evidently found central changes as easily to to detect as did their typically developing counterparts, the autistic group also found the marginal changes much harder to find. So what does all of this mean to us? Let's take a look at change blindness and consciousness. The autistic group was selecting items for attention in a similar way to the typically developing group. However, the participants with autism were less quick to move their attentional focus to marginal objects. This may reflect a difficulty in disengaging attention from those central items initially selected for attention or shifting attention between items. This study will also help us in our quest for consciousness. Perhaps there are different levels of consciousness or different 
limits on our capacity for consciousness and that typically developing individuals differ from autistic individuals in many ways other than those that are distinctly obvious. Whatever the case may be, we know that studying change blindness will help us to understand how we perceive the visual world. And that's the end.